This tutorial is brought to you by one of the authors of Revising Professional Writing, now in its third edition. My students call me Dr. Kim. The publishers made this video available under a Creative Commons license. For more information, go to parlaypress.com. I want you to start by thinking about writing a message like an email update for your boss. Before you can understand how to deal with specifics, like what content to include or how to organize it, you need to have a firm grasp on some prerequisites. You can't understand what makes a document successful without understanding its context. The document itself is one of three aspects of context represented by the rhetorical triangle. Yes, we're going all the way back to Aristotle here. The other corners consist of the reader and the writer in his or her purpose, which is our focus right now. This tutorial teaches you to analyze the purposes for which professionals deliver messages at work. We'll think about purpose while examining brief samples a human resource manager might deliver. Eventually, we'll focus on an email update written by a project manager. If you want to read that entire document, you'll need to view or download it at proswrite.com. To understand the purposes for writing at work, I'm introducing you to a model developed by a management researcher named Quinn. It's called the Competing Values Model. Let's use it to categorize the purpose of four brief emails. All were written by a human resource professional for the hiring managers in his company. When the HR Pro writes, our most expensive ads cost $250 per week, he's informing his readers. His message is static, it doesn't require any response or further action, and it's transactional, it focuses mostly on tasks. Let's try another example. When the HR Pro writes, if an unforeseen change occurs, keep us in the loop, his message is transactional, it focuses mostly on tasks, that makes it similar to informing, but it's dynamic, it prompts readers to do something in response. That means his purpose is directing. Here's another example. When the HR Pro says, do you have any ideas? His message is dynamic like directing. It requires audience response. But it's transformational because it's focused more on people than it is on tasks. The writer's purpose is consulting his audience. Quinn's model is called competing values because when a professional is consulting an audience, that conveys values that compete with those the pro conveys when informing that audience. Consulting shows a focus on people and on action. Informing shows a focus on tasks and the status quo. It may seem like consulting would always be best, but that's not the case. Any professional who always asks questions and never provides information isn't going to be effective. Instead, successful people are not stuck communicating for just one or two purposes. The final quadrant of the model is devoted to situations in which the HR Pro values his audience, like when he writes thank you or makes them a promise. Those messages convey a focus on the status quo rather than on action. The audience isn't required to respond. The messages are also transformational and convey a focus on people. So the competing values model helps us think about purposes for workplace messages by categorizing them into four classes informing, directing, consulting, and valuing. It reminds us that successful professionals communicate for all of those purposes. Let's turn our attention to another message. It's a passage from a welcome letter to new clients of a real estate company. Your job is to identify the purpose of the passage's message. The writer thanks readers. Plus, we strive to maintain the highest standards might be interpreted as a promise. The message is static because thanking or making promises doesn't require any further response from the reader or the audience. And it's transformational. It focuses more on people than it does on tasks. The primary purpose in this case appears to be ven. A moment ago I said that professionals are most effective when they communicate for all four purposes. That means over time with all organizational members. But this isn't the case for a single message. While most documents are likely to include more than one purpose, all successful workplace messages have one primary purpose. Let's consider this more carefully using the email I mentioned at the beginning of this tutorial. Here's the situation. Russell works as a senior manager for a general contracting company. 
This morning, he learned there's a problem at the Agate Beach construction site. The job foreman left keys in a front-end loader and two kids ran the machine into the corner of the building they're constructing. Repairs have pushed the schedule back three days and added $2,000 to costs. Russell updates the owner in an email. To determine the purpose of his email, we first need to identify the bottom line message in this situation. You can think of the bottom line as what Russell must say. Don't worry about how it should be said right now, just focus on the core information Russell has to communicate to his boss. One possible way of stating the bottom line is Agate Beach Project. But that tells the boss only the topic of the email, it's not complete. Another possibility is Agate Beach Project Progress Update. But while that's more descriptive, it's still just the topic, not the core message. The third possibility is more than a topic. Agate Beach Project is slightly behind schedule and over budget. Now that is the core information Russell must communicate to his boss. I'll have more to say about where the bottom line should appear within this email in the tutorial on bottom line placement. And I'll have more to say about how the line should be presented in the tutorials on style. For now, we're clear about the bottom line message of Russell's email and we can categorize its purpose within the competing values model. Agate Beach Project is behind schedule and over budget, so it's easy to rule out consulting or valuing, right? What about informing? directing. The difference between them is whether some action is required by the reader. So does Russell's message require a response by his boss? No actions required. That means the purpose of the bottom line and the email itself in this situation is informing. What about the fact that the final sentence of the email directs the reader to call? The purpose of that individual sentence is directing, but that doesn't determine the purpose of the entire email. Just remember that all successful workplace messages have one primary purpose, and it's based on their bottom line. You now have the means to categorize the four purposes for all professional messages. Being clear about your own purpose when you write in the workplace is critical, even if you decide not to state that purpose clearly for your audience. This tutorial also helps you provide feedback to other writers, an important task for all professionals. Remember, context is everything. Before you write, you must be clear about your audience's wants and needs and your bottom line message, which determines your purpose. Only then can you determine the best content or organization or style for a document that will succeed at work.